So I've called this video, Fail to Prepare, Prepare to Fail. Now, why am I calling it that? Well, I'm constantly amazed by the way so many people plan an event and then don't really consider the need for proper rehearsals. Now, I bang on about this all the time, but that is because the audience should be the center of everything. It matters not a jot how great the content or the speakers are or any of the rest of it if you're not considering the audience. And if you're not planning a rehearsal, then trust me, you're not considering your audience because how can you iron out any of the problems that would negatively impact the experience of an audience if you don't know about them? You won't know about them if you don't have a rehearsal. So maybe you're unbelievably confident and you think there's just not going to be any problems, in which case then at best you are naive and at worst you are delusional. You've got to think about just the simplest things like the nerves and confidence of your speakers and your contributors, not to mention what's their studio set up like if it's a virtual event and what about the sound and the connectivity. The fact as well that half your team will not have read all the emails you've been sending them properly. The agenda is going to have some missing elements and problems. And what is everything going to look like from an audience perspective? What are all the different opinions and misunderstandings that can arise? These are just a few reasons why you need a rehearsal, right? Now, the first thing I think rehearsals do is they help reduce the anxiety for your speakers and your presenters, which makes them more relaxed and more confident about the real event. Rehearsals are also the way to make sure that all the event planners can manage the technology properly. If you do these events without rehearsals, it's a little bit like flying a plane without getting a pilot in because event rehearsals are gonna allow everybody involved to test the kit and the functionality and get to know the virtual platform, the if you're doing it in person, obviously the, the stage, all the rest of it, all the things that, that, that are all the different components that make up the event. Rehearsals also give you options because they make sure you've got backup plans for when things go wrong. You don't know what you don't know. So you need to practice to get an idea of what things can go wrong and make the plans before the actual event so that you can resolve them. There are always unexpected hiccups in live events, whether virtual or in venue. So your rehearsals will indicate where these mistakes are going to pop up. Now with a virtual event in particular, a rehearsal can reveal any of the limitations with the virtual event platform before the event, and then give you the time to ensure that the customer support can help fix the glitch. And if it's not fixable, because let's face it, not every event platform does everything that you might be used to it doing, based on the fact that we're working with lots of different ones and they've all got different functionality. So if you've assumed something's gonna happen and then it isn't, you've at least got time to inform the audience and the attendees about different, I don't know, onboarding procedures or or different things that may need to be thought about. And that, may, that way their experience um, remains consistent. And that's super important because I know a lot of experienced event planners will actually use the event rehearsals to record the sessions. That way, if something goes wrong and the speaker can't make the live session on the day or their technology goes down, the event is again protected and the audience experience remains consistent. So I've been bang on about rehearsals. Who needs to be at them? Because if the right people aren't at them, forget about it. So the people that need to be at it, obviously the event organiser, the event host, the MC, the event production team, presenters, panelists, speakers, as many of them that you can physically get there as possible, and a mock audience. And that's a team of people essentially that you've tasked with watching in the different locations so they can feedback about what they're seeing and what is and isn't working. So lots of people then. So you need to book this date in really early in the event planning process, like literally the same day that you book the actual date of the event, you need to book the rehearsal. And before the rehearsal, event planner, you need to do this. You need to educate the hosts, the speakers and the presenters on the technology that you're going to be using. You need to make sure everyone knows their role, that their responsibilities have out, been outlined. You need to make sure all the internet connections, if it's a virtual rehearsal, are up to it. And you need to, if you're in a uh, real event, um, or real event, you know what I mean, uh, in venue event, you need to rehearse in that location and also get everybody who's rehearsing virtually to rehearse in the location that they'll be doing the event from with the same equipment that they intend to use during the event. And also you've got to do for the rehearsal what you would have to do for the event, which is prepare for the worst and have emergency plans in process.